There are actually two cats in the frame right now. So there's Toast, and then there's Thor. <laughs> He's in the cardboard box. He's, it's very hard to see him because he's very, very dark. Uh, but if we do this, <laughs> can you see the boy? You see that little boy? Oh, oh no! Toast, don't don't ruin his moment. He's having a moment in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thor looks suitably awkward. Um, okay. Where, where was I? What are we doing? Where are we going to talk about trajectories? Um, here's something. Um, I feel like we should talk briefly about derivatives before we talk about trajectories. Well, what do you think about that? Any opinions? I think that would be useful specifically when it comes to this. But I don't know if y'all are like super, maybe you're super familiar with derivatives already. I don't know. glasses. I need my glasses. <sighs> All right. Okay. All right. React to the Discord message if you're present. Especially, especially if you're tired, you should react with a sad lid emote. Um. <clears throat> okay. Um, some of you were doing a fire drill. Was that is that done? Are y'all back back in class now? What's what what was going on? Someone typed in chat, like one of my students typed in chat, just the fire alarm has gone off at our site. And I'm like, oh, at the school? And they were like, yeah, at the school, but I'll watch through my phone. <laughs> it's like, okay. Just imagining someone standing outside of the building on fire, um, watching math on their phone. Uh, it's a very good mental picture. Um, 
Okay, all right. Um, so now that you're all here, um, should we look into derivatives? I feel like we should, but I wonder like, how much do you remember from school? Like, should we not talk about it? Or well, what do you think? Uh, Cause I could just use derivatives and not explain more than that. Or I could do like a little, I guess I could do a repeat. Um, yes, please do explain, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, then, then we can do that. Uh, so then we're going to do derivatives and then we're going to do trajectories. Just need to make sure my cats don't escape. I have a window slightly open and a very heavy thing blocking the window. They should be able to get out. It's, they shouldn't be able to. But if there's a very exciting bird out there, they might force themselves and that would be bad. Um, explain what? Derivatives. Should we, should we do that? I think we're doing derivatives, right? If anything, it's going to be a refresher. There's been a lot of refreshers. And I guess even if you already know about derivatives, maybe it's it maybe I'll have a different perspective that might be useful regardless, hopefully. Um, okay. Um, let's see, where do we start this? I think it's best to start this in Unity. I think that's how we're going to do this. <clears throat> Uh, can we get some assignment uh, explanation on the assignments later? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, so today we're just going to talk about two topics. It's going to be derivatives and trajectories, and that's going to be this morning. Um, and I don't think that's going to take super long. I think that's going to be maybe two hours. Um, and then um, after those two lectures, I have no plans. Um, except I want you to work on assignments and for me to be available to help you um, for the rest of the day. Uh, I could just stay on stream for a little bit longer. Uh, if you have questions about the assignments, I can totally clarify some of them. Um, yeah, so, so we can do that right after uh, derivatives and trajectories. Just remind me and I will and I'll do that. I might forget. And so, so help me remember. Um, okay. All right. I'm trying, trying to figure out how much we should talk about graphs. Um, I, we should probably talk about graphs. Okay. All right. So, um, let's open our Unity project. We're going to need that. See, it's like when you're a hermit like me, where you just stay indoors all day and don't talk a lot, then um, doing lectures where you talk for like six hours nonstop, several days in a row, <laughs> my throat is actually hurting <laughs> today. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, no. I was not built for talking. Um, okay. Where's our... Where's our cube? We had a cube. Let's bring back the cube. Okay. Um, so we were previously looking at like point motion or like simulating a single point. Um, and um, basically animating the um, velocity of some object so that it moves um, along some direction, right? Um, I'm just going to revert this code to basically go back to what we had before. Uh, this was the fancy smooth smoothing movement, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna revert this one. Um, we might need Gizmos. Uh So I'm just going to remove all of the smoothing on this cube. 
and go back to our very basic uh, thing where we just specify, you know what, let's just do a single value. Um, so this is our velocity. We're just doing velocity along a single axis, right? A one-dimensional velocity. Um, so we can do, nope. I'm tired, okay? Don't, don't judge me. So we're just going to move along the x-axis. Um, let's just do that. We're going to need it in multiple places. Um, okay. Silently judging me? Oh no. Uh, all right, so now we're back to our very basic code. We specify a velocity, um, and then we move the position by our velocity multiplied by uh, time dot delta time because we want this to be frame rate independent. Uh, so this is something we looked at yesterday. Um, just a very basic setup. We then press play. Uh, and then we set the velocity to some value like one or negative one or negative two or uh, four or one or 0 0.5, whatever we want. So this is basically um, determining the the, um, the velocity of the object, right? And currently just along a single axis. Um, so one thing that we've done here is that um, this is simulated on a per frame basis. Um, we don't actually have a function that represents the entire path of this object, right? Like if you imagine a, a trajectory, then that's kind of a predetermined path if you have a simple like gravity model. Um, and so you can also do this type of movement using a function of time, right? Um, so let's, let's try doing this um, using a function instead. So this is the function for the position where the input is time. Let's just call it t. Um, and so now, instead of setting the uh, velocity, we're going to set the position directly based on a function. Um, and so instead of using delta time, we're going to set the position, as in we're going to use equals, directly. So new vector three. We just have an x coordinate here. So we're going to get the position over time dot delta time, or sorry, time dot time. Um, I guess I could return a vector three just for convenience. Or no, no, let's keep it a flip. Never mind. So this is effectively the um, the x position, right? Um, so now we can define the position of this one as kind of like a math function, right? You have an input of time and then you output a coordinate, right? Um, and so, so now we can write this as, for instance, we can do return. Um, let's see, so what would be a good math function? Let's say we do um, just return time, just returning time immediately. So if position equals time, um, then it's kind of like we're mapping time to the x-axis. Uh, so time is just going to be, um, it's going to move one meter per second um, to the right. So if we recompile this and then um, fix our errors. I was considering saying like, oh, what if we do what if I put on cat ears as soon as I make a mistake, but then I would wear like eight cat ears right now. So that's, that's not a viable option. So we now hit play. Um, it is now moving. There you go. It started at zero. Uh, so it moved from the, um, 
moot from the start of the or from the origin of the world, right? Because we we didn't really ask it to take its original position into account, uh, but now it's moving one meter per second based on our math function, right? Uh, but maybe we wanted wanted to take the start position into account. Um, so let's do start position. Just set it in awake, and then we do start position plus our um, movement function. Then hit play. And now it starts from the position that we wanted it to start from, right? Um, okay. So you can see that it's now just moving at one a rate of one unit per second. Uh, but we can, of course, modify this function. Um, so if we do two times t, um, it's going to move twice as fast. Um, and if we do 10 times t, it's going to be 10 times as fast. If we do negative one times t, it's going to move backwards um, by one meters per second. Um, and so the value we type in here um, is actually our velocity. Um, so we can bring back our velocity variable and just multiply it there. So if we recompile, we can set the velocity to 5, and then we press play, and now it's going to move faster. However, this time, the velocity is fully predetermined. Um, so there's no state for the position of this. This is always recalculated. Um, so now if we lower the velocity and set it to 1, it's going to move back. Um, because this is now a predetermined path instead of a constantly updating value. Um, we're not modifying the position. Uh, we're directly setting it based on a math function, right? Um, so this is kind of a different approach to animation. So this one is fully predetermined. Um, it's not like simulating something frame by frame. Um, and this kind of like um, this kind of explicit predetermined animation, um, if you saw my like math videos that I had a lot of animations in, those are all using this type of predetermined um, animation. Um, so the the downside is that you can't modify velocity at runtime because that modifies the entire path. Um, but the upside is that you can get the position at any time value. You can just sample it and you will know the answer. <clears throat> um, okay. And so maybe we want to make this movement a little more interesting. Let's, let's use a different, let's modify this function a little bit more. If we um, if we add um, t times t, so now we have time squared, and then multiply that by some value, um, let's say, let's call it value, just to be a little sneaky about it. So now we have t squared multiplied by some value. Okay. So let's set that to, um, well, it's going to start at zero, and that's fine. There we go. And then set velocity to one. And now let's set value to one. And so now this cube might be hard to tell. Let's restart. Um, set it to one. See, it's slow in the beginning. And then it starts to accelerate. And then it's going to move faster and faster. And so what we've done here is effectively we've factored in acceleration into our function. Um, and so acceleration is a little bit sneaky because this has a factor of 1 half. Um, and and so, so technically, this should be 0 0.5 times um, our acceleration value. OK. Um, and so this is a very, very, very basic uh, formula for 
um, position over time where you specify acceleration and velocity. Um, and so, so this kind of function right here, uh, we can actually visualize this in the way that most people visualize things um, is using graphs. Uh, there is a website that is super useful for this. I mentioned it once before on this class, I think. So there's a website called Desmos, desmos.com slash calculator. This is a super useful online graphing calculator. Um, where's, where's my, there we go. OK, so here we can actually visualize these functions. Um, and so in this case, if we imagine the x-axis being time, we can kind of write our function here immediately. Uh, we just had, um, this was just our starting points. Um, so actually, this t should rather be x in this case if we wanted to match. Um, but that's our input value to the function. And in this case, it's time, right? Um, and so this is just moving one meters per second. So on the x-axis, we have time. And on the y-axis, we have distance, how far away it's moved. Um, so it's really important to rem remember that the y-axis is the value we get out of the function. And the x-axis is the input to the function, which, again, in this case, is just time in seconds. So where it says 2, that means 2 seconds into the future. It's going to be at the value above that number. And so when we added a, a squared, like uh, time squared, then we get this accelerating motion. Um, <clears throat> so the um, so so the, with this you can basically control the um, the speed and the uh, the velocity and the acceleration. Um, but with a function like this, you might also you might also want to know like what is um, like let's say you had a more complicated formula. Um, and then you just want to know, like, what is the um, what is the velocity? Let's say we didn't have a velocity parameter, uh, you just had a different formula. Then how would you calculate velocity from that formula? Um, then uh, generally, that's what a derivative is. Um, a derivative is the rate of change of a function. Um, and so, so if you have a um, so if you have a graph of some function, let's say we do um, 5x squared. Let's say this is our, this is the, the equation describing the motion. Uh, or maybe, maybe something a little, bit, a little bit more complicated. So negative uh, 2x uh, plus 5 squared. Maybe this is our weird, weird little motion path, right? Um, and so remember, the y-axis is the uh, position, and the x-axis is time. So this one would move backwards in the beginning, and then it would, would uh, start moving forwards, and then it would start moving forwards faster and faster. Um, and again, we could just shove this in, like try it out directly. So we have negative 2t, 5t times t, so that's t squared. Um, so we, we can just test this function. Um, so if we go to Unity, and hit play. We are, our camera is who knows where. Um, um, oh, this is going to move really fast. Uh, we're going to have to modify this one. Let's do, let's do this function instead. Uh, negative 2x plus uh, x squared. OK. So we're going to do this function now. So recompile and hit play. And now watch the cube going backwards and then forwards. Right? So backwards and then forwards. And so, so that's the graph we're looking at here. That's the exact fu same function. Um, remember, x-axis is time. So if you imagine, um, um, you can sort of imagine this line as your time parameter. So as time moves on, it moves backwards. And then here, it starts moving forwards again. 
And then here it's starting to accelerate forwards even further and further and further, right? Okay, does that make sense? Graphs can be a little bit confusing because you don't have X and Y axes really. Um, y.5 for acceleration, we're gonna get, a, get to that. Um, that was spoilers, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Um, so remember that the x-axis in this case is time, and the y-axis is the uh, position along the x-axis. Excuse me. Um, okay. So, um, and so, so maybe maybe you want to figure out like what is the um, what is the velocity at any given point. Um, because now we we just have the position um, along this whole thing, but how quickly are we moving like here, or how quickly are we moving over here or over here? Like how do we figure that out? And that is exactly what derivatives are. They are they are a function that represents the rate of change at any given point. Um, and so. Um, Where's my pen? Um, so if we have our, our function for position, um, let's call it P. Usually you write functions as a, um, in a parenthesis like this, where you have your input value. <coughs> um, in this case, our input value is a uh, time value, right? So that's, um, we can just call that T. Uh, some position over time, um, in this case, is negative uh, 2x plus x squared. So that's negative 2t uh, plus t squared. Um, and so this gives us the position. But then if we want to get the uh, velocity somewhere, um, then we need to differentiate this function. Um, and to differentiate is the act of um, figuring out what the derivative of another function is. So we need to differentiate this in order to figure out what the velocity is. Um, and the velocity or the derivatives are usually denoted using a little prime function or a little prime marker here. So if we want the derivative, then how do we get the derivative of this function? Um, and remember, this is the velocity. In fact, I should, should color code this. So that's the velocity. And, and I should also do um, So this position, and then we have velocity. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we have the position over time, and then we want the function for the velocity over time. Um, and getting the um, derivative of a function like this is actually pretty straightforward. Um, this is a uh, this is called a polynomial. Uh, a polynomial is basically when you have um, some constant um, plus another constant um, times um, x plus another constant uh, times x squared plus another constant times x cubed and so forth, right? Um, so so th this is the uh, format for a polynomial. Uh, these are used a lot uh, in many different functions. Uh, trajectories are also polynomials. Uh, Bezier curves are polynomials. Um, a lot of things are polynomials. Uh, so this is just kind of the the basic format of, of this type of function. Um, let's actually also color code our input variable because that's going to be important. A little bit more readable. Um, 
Okay. So the rules for uh, differentiating um, in order to calculate the derivative um, is generally that you take the exponent and multiply it ahead of the, the thing itself. So, so if you have t to the power of 5, the derivative of this, if we differentiate this one, uh, this would be uh, 5 t um, to the power of 4. Um, and so this rule follows for, uh, for each term. Uh, so when you differentiate a polynomial, um, you just differentiate each term separately. So we have negative 2t and then t squared, right? Um, and so this rule, you can just use that for anything. Um, like as, as soon as you have a some your your dependent variable t to some power, um, then this is the rule that you follow. So if you have, let's do another one. So if you have uh, three um, t three uh, t cubed, what what would that be? Quiz. Go go for it. See if you can figure this one out. I'm gonna like awkwardly wait for someone in class to raise their hand. 60, yes. Um, so we multiply down the exponents. So two times three is six. Um, and then it becomes uh, just t uh, to the power of one, which is the same thing as the value itself, right? Um, so we end up with 60. Um, and then we can differentiate that again if we want to. And this one, um, now t is t. Remember, t to the power of 1. Uh, but then if we do t to the power of 0, that's what it would reduce to, right? Um, so it's going to be 6t uh, to the power of 0. Uh, but anything to the power of 0 is 1. So we're effectively just multiplying by 1 here. Uh, so it's just 6. Um, and then we can differentiate again. Um, and when you differentiate a constant, as in there's no dependent variable here, um, or independent variable, one of them, whatever, there's no t, um, then this just becomes zero. Um, and so, so this is, is like 99% of the time where I need to know derivatives, um, I just have to remember this rule. Like that's it. Um, so you, you plop down and multiply uh, with the exponent, reduce it by one, um, and then continue like that, right? Um, now, remember that this only applies to your input variable uh, because we're differentiating with respect to time. Um, sometimes you have constants here. Um, so if you have a constant that's like C, um, or let's call it, uh, let's call it A, um, a to the power of two or whatever. If you differentiate this, um, it actually becomes zero um, because it doesn't depend on time, right? This is just a constant. Um, and so that also becomes zero. Um, so, so you need to remember that this rule is specifically um, for, the, um, for the input variable of the function. Okay. Um, all right, so this is this is like how you differentiate simple like polynomial expressions. Um, so now we have the tools to differentiate this, right? Now we can figure this out. Um, all right, let's do term by term. So negative two t, that will become uh, negative two, because t to the power of zero is just one, so negative two times one is negative two, and then we have t squared, and that will become plus. Uh, two uh, t, and now we have our derivative. We've now differentiated the function for position, and we now have a function that represents the velocity at a given time. Um, and that's kind of cool, isn't it? Like now we just like we have this math function, and all of a sudden we can get this like very physical quantity out of it, which is the velocity. Um, and so let, let's let's implement this in Desmos just to see what it looks like, and then see if our cat is eating cables. Hey, Salad. Do not. See, I let them chew on literally everything. 
but I don't want them to chew on cables. Like it's, I'd rather have them chew on my foot than cables. Valid? Hey. Okay, this cat is being, being a boy. Hold on. I don't want him unplugging or getting electrocuted. Salad? Let go. Let go. This boy. This boy. Okay. Yeah, you're in quarantine. It's a salad here. Where are you purring? It's a wrong response. You're supposed to be, be gumpy. You're supposed to be gumpy. Um, okay. How do you swap between the two colors in Photoshop? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, the, hey, what? What? But, um, you know, I used to use the color picker, um, but these days I have a stream deck. <laughs> And so I pick colors from that. Um, so I just set up my colors and some uh, brush sizes and, and whatnot. Um, and so that's that's how I do that. Hey, color me impressed. Good one. Um, no! <laughs> he's so cute. It's so tempting. This is why he's an asshole, because he's so cute. He can just get away with anything. Okay, Salad. You know, I was going to teach math. You're kind of occupying my tablet now. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's, <laughs> let's see if we can continue regardless. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, so the, <laughs> hey, okay, what, what is up with you? Can you not just chill? Do you have to eat everything? Let salad drop, hey. Well, did we go for break now already? We're five minutes early for break. <laughs> but salad seems to really want to. Or I should just yeet him out of my chair, but... Okay, let's flip you at least. There we go. How about that? Now you're a little bit further away. Um... Okay. So, um... So now we have a, now we, we just differentiated this uh, position, position function. So we had a function representing position over time. We differentiated it um, and we ended up with a function that represents the uh, velocity over time. Um, and so, so let's see what that looks like. Uh, so negative two plus two T. 
All right, so let's follow our color scheme, I guess. Uh, let's do the position in black and do the derivative in red. Um, what? Okay, so our derivative is negative two plus two x. Okay, and so this one might take a while to parse uh, because you need to kind of figure out what it even represents, right? Um, so remember that x is time. So time is moving to the right here. Um, and then the value, the y-coordinate, represents the velocity. Um, and so the velocity is negative here. And so... Um, Negative velocity here means that we're moving backwards, right? And you can see that the function goes down. That's why the velocity is a negative. But then the velocity is actually speeding up, right? Uh, it's getting closer and closer to uh, zero. Um, and so, so you can see that, or it's rather, it's decreasing, but it's decelerating towards moving towards a positive direction. Um, and so the velocity is gonna decrease more and more and more and more until it hits zero. Um, and so you can see that where this one is turning around, because it's slowing down and they're turning around, that's where the derivative is exactly zero. Um, and so, so when we hit play in Unity, it's going to move backwards first, right? A zero, and then it moves forward. Um, and so that's our, that's our velocity. And then now we can bring back our velocity vector. We, we, we showed the velocity here before, right? Um, so now we can draw the velocity again. Um, let's bring back that. Um, and then let's show the velocity vector. And so the function is negative two plus two x. So negative two plus two times x, in this case, x is time, right? Um, and so now we have our velocity and now we should be able to see the velocity again. Um, wait, oh, cause it's using the editor time. I was like, what, why is the, <laughs> why is the velocity drawing? And I'm guessing it's, it's because it's in on draw gizmos, time.time .time is actually running. Um, but if we restart the game, or just start the game, um, I have the game paused now, and you can see that it's backwards already. So that means the velocity is negative one. And then if we hit play, you see it's moving backwards, and then it's moving forwards again. And so that is the velocity. We, we've just calculated the velocity vector just purely from um, differentiating our function, which is kind of neat, isn't it? Um, and so, so one of the really powerful things about this is that um, you can get a lot of properties out of your uh, function like this. Um, like for instance, what if we want to know uh, where does the cube turn around? Because um, what if this was a more complicated function? Um, then, I don't know, maybe, maybe we had variables for this instead. Um, so, um, like if we had had 3.3 .3 or something. Um, like let's say we had a function like this. Um, actually, let's give it a variable. Uh, is this how Unity calculates a rigid body velocity? Um, no, because Unity's rigid bodies are not, um, they're not predetermined, right? Uh, rigid bodies simulate uh, frame by frame, and that they have to do that because they have to react to the environment, right? Um, yeah. Um, but so, so we can replace a lot of these things with the, uh, with variables, right? So maybe we can do ax uh, plus uh, bx squared, and then we had some variables for that. Um, and so now we can, we can tweak this function to however we want it to move, right? Uh, and then if we want to do the derivative of that, remember A and B are constants, um, so we just treat them like any other number. 
Um, so then the derivative is going to be a plus uh, 2bx. Two, um, two and so, again, you can see that whatever we set this function to, the velocity is zero where we have our what's called a local minimum. And this is where the cube turns around, right? Um, yeah. And so if you imagine that maybe, just maybe, let's say this is a trajectory and you want to figure out um, at what point is the maximum of this trajectory? Like you have a function describing a trajectory and then you want to know what's the maximum here? Like what is the maximum height that we're reaching given some initial conditions? Then we can actually use the derivative directly. If we use the derivative, um, then if we just calculate where is the derivative zero, then we get the time value at the peak um, of this um, of this trajectory, right? Or it, and it doesn't have any any trajectory either. Uh, it it could be any function, right? Because uh, now this is just a function. Um, salad, salad is also a function of time. Okay, are you done? Are you done? Blip. Okay. Um. And so, um, now that we have this arbitrary function, we have, we have a, a simple function of ax plus bx squared, um, where we can modify these and we can get the derivative immediately by just following the same differentiation rules. Um, and we can figure out where is this peak. Uh, but then how do you actually calculate that? Um, well, we can just write our function. So this is our derivative, right? This is our velocity. If we write that function and set it to equal uh, zero, uh, so we want to figure out what when is this equal to zero. Um, and so this is kind of just basic algebra. Um, we need to figure out, we need to solve for x to figure out where is x, um, uh, where is the y value uh, or where is the velocity zero. Um, and so we just set the velocity to zero here and then we solve for that. So we subtract a from both sides. Um, and then we divide by 2b. Um, and now x here is the time at the peak of this function. Because we just, all we asked for was when is the velocity zero, which always coincides with this peak where it turns around, right? Uh, so even if we, if we modify these values now, um, you can see that the velocity is always zero at the peak, and then we get the exact time value where we are at the peak. Um, and so it's, so it's a very useful tool. It's, it's incredibly useful whenever you have a polynomial or something else that you can differentiate really. Um, and you want to know where is the peak, uh, or maybe you want to know, uh, like where, where is the, the valley? Then it will it will do the same thing. It will just know. Uh, it will just give you where the um, where the velocity is zero, which is always at a peak or a valley, right? Um, yeah. So those are just some of the the like more useful use cases of um, uh, derivatives. But that's pretty much the only use case I've had in game dev for derivatives is figuring out like trajectory. Um, extrema values or getting the or differentiating trajectories um, and for splines. Um, so splines are usually polynomials um, and so there's a lot of useful math you can do there if you know the derivatives of the splines. Um, and you can actually do the same thing for um, Bezier curves um, and so so let me show you what that looks like. I need to drink more tea. Okay. Um, where, where do we do this? Where do we do this? 
Okay. So, for example, so here's a um, here's a set of Bezier curves. Um, so these are just the the same Bezier curve we did before, but they're just connected, um, and that makes for a cubic Bezier spline. Um, and you can write the formula for the Bezier curve using matrices, which is a very useful way to write it. Um, and so differentiating this uh, is very easy. You just differentiate the uh, matrix here because these are the only values that are dependent on um, the t value or time, right? And so now we can actually get the derivative of a 2D function because remember, this gives you a 2D coordinate given time. Uh, but what we've been doing so far here is just getting a one-dimensional uh, position, right? Because we're just moving along the x-axis. But you can do this using 2D functions as well. Um, and so you can just get your velocity, acceleration, and jolts directly from differentiating. Um, and you can actually draw that graph as well. Um, so if you look at the um, derivative of this Bezier curve, or the, the, the set of Bezier curves, um, you can draw the derivative as curves too. If you remember, this is the velocity vector. It's kind of the motion of this object um, as we traverse and increase time along this path. And so the derivative, again, instead of just being a, a simple graph where the x-axis is time, uh, we instead have x and y coordinates of our, um, x and y coordinates drawing a curve in 2D space, right? And so, so this is literally showing the derivative of the spline. Um, and so we're kind of do, doing a similar thing here. <clears throat> um, so it's, it's a lot of things uh, related to splines are useful when it comes to derivatives. Um, so that's a little bit outside of what we, we should talk about. Um, okay, and then let's uh, click in Photoshop. Uh, and if you click in Photoshop, it does this. Uh, and then if I try to pan, it does this. Uh, because I'm not using my tablet, I'm using my mouse. Because Photoshop is just a great piece of software. Um, and now we're going on break. So do let's do a 10 minute break, resuming at 10:10. Uh, 10, 10. Oh, I really need a drink. And they're charging you for Pantone colors. It's so dumb. Okay. <clears throat> How's the YouTube chat been doing? I haven't I haven't looked at YouTube chat. Uh, there was a super chat. Oh, uh, it's still in my history. Uh, what theme are you using on Writer? Uh, fascinated by your content. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm just using the default Writer theme. I think I might be using the one called Visual Studio Dark. Maybe. Um, the only thing I've changed is that I've changed the background to my my brand color background <laughs> that I use in my videos. Um, but th that's basically it. Uh, so I use the same color for um, the background of my videos as in my code. <clears throat> mm. Did you see the Unity announcement that they're adding a spline editor? Uh, they've had a spline tool for a long time now, right? The um, the spline package? Um, or is it a separate thing? I've been working on a spline plugin, so I hope Unity doesn't make a good one. Try to take your scribbles making it a two screen desktop. I did this in paint, but apparently trying to duplicate and use the background color crashed my paint three times. Oh. That's weird. It's a new spline thing, more built in. Oh, is it unrelated to the package? That would suck. That would be the second time Unity does a thing that I really was, I was super excited to make a plugin for. As far as you're aware it is, okay. Mm. I hope it's bad. That's my selfish opinion. Then I can make my plugin anyway.
Uh, okay. <clears throat> I guess I hadn't come that far in my spline plugin anyway, but mm, still annoying. Unity stop sealing France plugin ideas challenge. I guess the spline plugin isn't that um, isn't that unique, but um, I guess the yeah, hmm. I don't know. the The thing is that like most people, when they implement splines, is that they usually don't implement a lot of splines. Um, the um, like quite often they they implement just like busy as splines, and then they leave it at that. Um, and so I think the I think the unique thing about my potential future plugin is that it would be. Well, way more than that. <laughs> um, and so it would be like um, Bezier splines, you'd have Hermite splines, you would have Catmull Rom splines. Oh yeah, Catmull Rom, they would probably implement that. Um, so Catmull Rom splines and uh, B splines, but then also all the variants of those, like NURBS um, and the non-uniform Hermite, the non-uniform Bezier, the uh, non-uniform Catmull Rom. Like there are many different types of splines. And I think implementing all of these it's actually kind of complicated, um, especially if you want it to be intuitive and useful and good um, and performance. And so I think I think I, I want to make a plugin for that. And I've been researching like splines for the past year. And so I'm hoping I, I hope I have more knowledge than some engineer at Unity who was like thrust into making this <laughs> at some point. Um, and so, so I'm sort of just, just hoping that I've gathered enough knowledge to make my spline plugin um, more feature rich when it comes to different types of splines than any other spline plugin. That's my hope at least. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, but who knows? I'd make this plugin anyway. Um, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's there's way more competition. There's there's more existing spline plugins uh, than there was for like shapes. Shapes was more of a unique um, plugin, I think. So I don't, I don't know what the market would look like for that. Um, okay, uh, Thor wants me to sit next to him so that he can eat. Uh, so I'm gonna <laughs> look at salad. Uh, so I'm gonna sit next to Thor. Um, he needs a snack, buddy. I don't know why, but he needs a snack, buddy. Oh, I need my tea. I need my tea.
Okay, is, is salad fat? I'm, I'm a little worried. I'm not sure if he's fat. Is he just fluffy or fat? Or both? Like, it kind of looks like he's got a bit of a flab of fat. <laughs> he's laying down. Okay, I guess Toast is napping in there now. Uh. What? What? Uh. What's the name of the Bezier script? Um, I think I pushed it to the repository. Um, it's a good question. What did I aim it? Uh, lerp test is the Bezier script. Obviously, you know. Um, I thought I pushed that. It should be push. Um... Oh, it's outside of scripts? Oh, because I'm lazy. Um, yeah, I should have just moved all of that in. Um, you know what? Let me just move move all the scripts and, and I'll push that. Actually, I can't do that with cube mover yet. Um, or I can, I can do that. Uh... What? I did not mean to do that. Okay. I'm gonna push that. Um, <sighs> Math function cube movement. There we go. You know what? I'm going to rename lerp test to Bezier test. Oh, I should have done that in writer. Uh... Okay, I push it now. Now you should have everything in the correct folders. Um, usually I, um, in my projects, I need to drink water. Um, and so that's why my, <laughs> my throat is very sad right now. Um, <clears throat> so usually in my projects, I have the um um i usually leave scripts out in the root folder um to mean that they're unsorted and then i usually have folders for di different like types of scripts um <clears throat> um 
And so if, if a script is just lying in root, that means I need to move them into a folder. Um, it's the way I work at least. <clears throat> but in this case, there's just one folder, so. Um, okay, all right. Um, I think we're ready to resume a little bit over time. Um, show your presence. React. Okay. All right. Um. So let's Let's do one more thing with this um, before we move on to trajectories. Um, and so, so if you then want to go one step further, like maybe you don't just want to do position and velocity, what if you do, you do the uh, derivative one or differentiate it once more? Uh, doing that, um, then again with the with this uh, notation, it would be p and then double prime. Um, of t um, colors are great um, so if we differentiate this again we just use the same rules just repeat the same rules uh, that was had here right so this becomes zero so zero plus um, and then 2t will simply become 2 Um, okay. And then this is the acceleration. Um, uh, 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 we're Running out of space. Oh no, the Bezier curve. I'm gonna make it smaller. Okay, so now we can calculate the acceleration of this object, right? Um, so now we've gone one step further than velocity. Um, and so we can visualize that too. Um, can do that in a graph if we want to. Uh, so we have the, um, this is our, um, this is our position. This is our velocity. And then our acceleration uh, is just differentiating this once more, right? Uh, and so a is a constant, so that's going to be zero, and then it's plus two um, b. So two b is going to be the um, uh, our uh, acceleration, and that's just a constant uh, in this case. Uh, our acceleration is just straight up a single value, right? It is two times our constant b. Um, that's our acceleration. Um, and so if we, depending on the uh, shape we have here, uh, we have different ac acceleration values, but the acceleration is the same. Uh, it's the same acceleration across the entire curve. It's just that the velocity starts out as negative, um, but then the acceleration moves the velocity um, to become more and more positive, right? Um, yeah, and so, so if we modify the acceleration, if we have positive acceleration, um, we have a, a local minimum here. Uh, if we have a negative acceleration, we have a local maximum here. So then it's accelerating backwards. Um, 
Yeah, and so those are kind of the relationships between all of these different functions. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously we can we could differentiate this once more. Um, so if we differentiate it again, in this case, it's just going to be zero, right? And every other derivative uh, after that is just all going to be zero. Um, if you want to get esoteric, uh, this um, this also has a name. Um, so this would be p triple prime. Uh, so this is called um, jolt. Uh, so jolt is uh, also jerk, but every time I call it jerk, um, people make comments about it because it's very funny. Um, but yeah, it can either be called jerk or jolt. Uh, either of them is fine. Um, there are names for the rest, uh, but nobody uses them. Pretty much you only use the names for the first three. Um, and then you just say the fourth derivative of position or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, another thing on notation, uh, once you get into like very high derivatives like this, uh, sometimes you will see the notation of uh, p and then a parenthesis with a three inside and then the t value here. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes you just see a number like this. Um, yeah, just a, just a heads up. Um, All right. Um, okay. All right. Um, I'm trying to figure out if we should. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Let, let's actually solve this. Um, so now we've been talking about trajectories, right? Um, and what do we mean by trajectories really? Like that, that's kind of a special type of function, right? Um, and so, um, so maybe, maybe we can actually derive what that is, right? Um, so, so let's, let's see if we can figure it out. Um, so usually you would, you would define a set of parameters. Like these are the, uh, conditions that I want. Um, and then you can solve an equation from that. Right. Um, and so, so if we, um, let's see. So, so in this case, we started out with a, uh, this is called a quadratic function, um, or a quadratic polynomial. It's called quadratic because that's the, uh, the biggest exponent of our time value that we have. If we had uh, another one uh, that was to the power of three, this would be a cubic function and so forth. Um, or if you had a power 12, it would be a dodecic function um, or just you would just call it a degree 12 function. Um, so there's actually one more factor that we could add here because we don't have a constant factor. Uh, we could have a factor here that is, in this case was just zero. Uh, so we could just set some value here that would basically be an offset for the entire function. Um, so we haven't added that one yet. So we could, could add that if we want. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rename these. I'm going to call the first one A. Now we have A, B, C. Um, so we have our function as usual, but now we have our function a, we can vertically offset our position if we want to, we're just, just offsetting it. Right. Um, okay. And so, so the, um, these are now incorrect because I swapped the variable names. Um, so this should be B and C and this should be C, I believe. Um, Okay, and the um, the vertical offset here, um, you can see that that doesn't affect the velocity or acceleration at all, right? Uh, which makes sense because if you differentiate a function um, that has a constant, that constant is just not going to exist in the uh, derivatives after that, right? 
Um, and so, so this is kind of this format up here, um, like a plus b x plus c x squared. Uh, this is a like kind of the canonical form of a, a quadratic function. Uh, in this case, it's a quadratic polynomial. Um, and as you can see, the uh, this uh, shape um, is actually called a parabola, and trajectories are parabolas. Um, but usually, you don't really define trajectories using um, using values like a, b, and c and whatnot, right? Uh, usually, you want to have a bit more of a tangible approach to this. Um, you want to you want to define like here's my starting point, here's my starting velocity, here's my um, here's my acceleration. And so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to derive um, the function for a trajectory. And so let's just let's just set up our parameters. Um, so at let's say the function of position, we don't know this function yet. Uh, we want the um, position at time zero. Uh, we want that to be the starting position, right? Um, so so what do we call that? Maybe p zero or something. Um, that, that's that's an okay name. Let's call it that. Um, and then we want the um, the derivative, in other words, the velocity, we want to give it a launch velocity. Like if you imagine a, a turret, just priming that, if you imagine a turret firing something, um, then maybe you want to set the velocity of your um, projectile, right? So you want the velocity at time zero to be a specific value. Um, so we're going we're gonna to call that v0. That's the uh, velocity at time zero. Uh, and then we need some sort of acceleration. Um, and if you imagine something like if, if you have uh, your, your turret and it fires something like this, right? Then you have an initial velocity. Um, so that's going to be v0. Uh, let's actually uh, color code this. There we go. Um, uh, then we have an initial velocity, and we also have an initial position, right? The starting position here uh, is p0. Uh, but then we also need um, something that will change the velocity. Because remember, um, if a velocity is just left to its own devices, it's just going to continue straight ahead, like it's in space, right? Where where there's no gravity around. But in this case, we want gravity. We, we need something that can pull the velocity downwards, right? Um, and so we need acceleration. We need something that can change velocity. And the thing that changes velocity is acceleration. And so that's going to be the uh, second derivative. Um, and here, remember that when we have a, a quadratic function, um, there is no um, like factor of t. So t doesn't actually matter. Uh, like we looked at before, uh, the acceleration is just a single value. Um, or the, the third derivative is just a single value, right? Um, so, so it doesn't actually matter if we do this at like t value zero or somewhere else if we want to use the quadratic function. Um, but just to just to keep it consistent, we can type zero here, even though it doesn't really matter. Um, and so this should be our gravity constant, right? Um, let's just move that out of the way. Um, and so that's going to be gravity. But we could just call it acceleration to be extra fancy. Um, gravity is just acceleration, isn't it? Um, so we have a zero. OK, um, so now we can actually solve this. Um, so how can we solve this? Well, we know that our function p of uh, t, oops, p of t um, equals, Uh, and then we have a few unknown va variables, right? 
<clears throat> and so we have A plus uh, B T plus um, C T uh, squared. And so whenever you have an equation that you need to solve that has three unknown constants, the unknown constants in this case is simply A, B, and C, right? Um, then you need three equations that can constrain this function. Uh, and we have three equations. Uh, we have three, three like strict requirements for this function. And then we have three unknown variables that we need to solve for. And so we can kind of just solve for each of these, right? Um, and so we can go one by one. So first off, um, I can actually keep these so we can see the process. Um, so first off, if we want the value of our position to be p0 when t is 0, we can just imagine what happens if we set t to 0, right? If this is 0, what would happen? Uh, well, this would just get removed because it's 0, right? So this would get, get cancelled out. Uh, this is also multiplied by 0. And all, all we're left with is a. And so this means a has to be p0 because we want uh, p at 0 should be uh, p0. And the only variable we have there is a. Um, and so we've kind of solved our, our first, first one. So we can just do this, erase that, and type p0. Um, there we go. Um, all right, we got rid of one. Um, and now let's do the other one. So now we want the derivative at zero to be v zero. Okay, so now it gets a little bit more tricky. Um, <clears throat> so now we need to get the derivative of this function in order to solve um, for another one of these constants. Um, so we can get the get the derivative. Uh, we know how to do that now, right? Um, so p zero or, or p prime of t equals, um, okay, so p0 is just a constant that's going to become 0. Uh, so that one is just going to get removed. Uh, bt uh, is going to become b, and then plus c, uh, plus 2c, right? Uh, a t, plus 2ct. Because again, the exponent uh, gets multiplied ahead of that term um, and gets reduced by 1. So that's t to the power of 1 which is just t. Uh, so now we know the derivative um, of this still unknown function. Uh, so we want this to be v0 um, when t is 0. So here we run into a similar similar thing, right? Um, we, we just test what would happen if we put 0 here. Well, this becomes 0, this cancels out, uh, and all we're left with is b, and so the conclusion is that uh, b has to be v0. So you can see that it's kind of the same thing happened, right? Uh, so this is just kind of the, the derivative. And then we figure out that b has to be um, v0. OK, so going back to our original equation, we can just um, Plop that in because now we know that b has to be v0. So v0 t plus ct um, squared. All right, now we have one variable left uh, and we have one equation left and that is for the acceleration. So again, just do the same thing. We get the derivative of this function to get the, uh, we differentiate that function to get the acceleration. Uh, so that would be uh, p double prime of t um, equals, so this would become 0, right? We're differentiating now, so that would become 0. And then 2ct would just become 2c. <clears throat> um, and so 
So now we're left with this equation right here. So if t is zero, um, but here t doesn't really matter, we want the second derivative to have the value of our acceleration, right? Um, but in this case, it's, we have a factor of two, right? Um, and so now it's a little bit more complicated because if we want that to be equal to our acceleration, um, we have to take this uh, factor of two into account. Um, and so, so all we need to do is to cancel out that two um, by uh, by setting the uh, by multiplying it by multiplying it by 0.5. Um, and so. Um, effectively, what we're doing uh, is we're taking our, um, where, where, where my colors go? Um, so, so now we know that our constant C has to be the uh, acceleration constant, um, and then we divide it by two, or multiply it by 0 0.5, right? <clears throat> and so that's that's how we ensure that this function will um, be a zero, right? Um, okay. Um, and so if you want the, um, that might have been a little bit, kind of skipped a few things I had here. So so if we if we solve this a little bit more more step by step, then um, then effectively what we're doing is that we know that this should equal um, a0, right? Um, and then we divide both sides by 2. Um, there we go. Uh, and so we end up with a0 divided by 2. And so that's c. That's our constant c. Um, okay, and so so now we can go back to our original equation. We've kind of done this very much step by step. Uh, sorry if I'm bogging you down in algebra, but I hope it's I hope it's a little bit more useful and intuitive to know where all of these factors come from. Um, And so now we have our acceleration uh, divided by two. Let's just move this around a little bit. Okay, so this is the uh, formula for the um, for a trajectory. Or specifically, this is the vertical position for a trajectory, um, but it actually works for for either for either way that you set it up. Um, so this is our uh, trajectory formula. Um, that's the that's the final final formula right there. Um, uh, kind of lost it around p prime uh, b plus 2 ct. Oh, this part right here. Um, so so the what we did here was that um, we need to solve for variables, right? We need to know what b and c are because b and c are unknown at this point. Um, and uh, so from here, we know that when t is zero, we want that equation to equal v zero, right? Um, and so if we, well, you're empty Photoshop. So what we're effectively doing is that we're substituting t with zero. So I'm gonna replace that. Um, zero and then c times zero. Um, and we, we know that we need this function to equal v0, right? And so the result of this function should be v0. 
And so we can just remove that and say this should be v0. That's what, that's what our initial equation said. We want at time 0, the velocity should be equal to v0. And that's our initial velocity, right? That's the, the initial velocity of the thing that we want to launch in our trajectory. Um, and so, so then you can kind of see what happens here, right? We were multiplying by zero. And so this entire thing just gets deleted. Um, and so this gets just yeeted into infinity. And all we're left with is b equals v zero. Um, and now we've figured out that constant, right? And then we substitute it in. We, we replace b with v0. And now we solve for, for b. Um, and so we're, this is kind of the process we're doing uh, in each of these steps. We're just, um, just substituting t by our value 0. And then we're solving for whatever happens then, right? Um, yeah. OK, did that make sense? And the reason a is no longer in the equation, because uh, that was the first thing we did the same thing with. Um, so did the same thing here. We we know that this um, this whole thing should be equal to p zero at time zero, right? So if time is zero, we need the position to be exactly equal to the starting position of the trajectory. So when time is zero, we want it to be here. Um, and so we do the same thing here. We um, select the wrong tool, and then we replace t with 0, because again, it's at time 0. So we can do this. So b times 0, uh, 0 squared. And we know that this should be equal to p0, right? We have p0 here. Um, so again, the position at time 0 should be equal to our starting position. And so we, we can just solve this here, um, do, the, do the same thing. Um, the, everything is multiplied by 0 here, right? Uh, so this is multiplied by 0, so it disappears. This is multiplied by 0, it disappears. And again, we know that p0 should be equal to p1. Um, that's, that's a constraint we set up, or p0, um, the variable p0, sorry. So now we know that a should be p0. Um, yeah, so we kind of figured these out like one by one. And then finally, we did the same thing for C. There we go. And that's how we end up with the trajectory formula. <coughs> um, okay. Uh, so the end result is the same equation for the start, just work down bit by bit. Uh, pretty much, yeah. So now we, we derived the trajectory equation from a set of initial constraints. So this is the requirement that we had. We wanted to specify the initial conditions, right? Although the acceleration is going to be the constant condition um, because it's the same across the whole thing. But we wanted the initial conditions of start here with this velocity, and this uh, acceleration, or gravity. Uh, and then we want the function that describes the path that that's going to take. And that's exactly what we're getting here. So, so this is the equation for trajectories. Um, so for jerk, the factor would be 1 sixth. Uh, yes. Um, this actually follows a pattern. You can generalize this. Um, I believe it is uh, 1 divided by the factorial of n, um, I think, where n is the degree of the term. Um, so that, that's going to be the, the factor in front of each initial uh, condition, I think. Um, um, yeah. Um, so this is our uh, constraints. Um, and 
then we end up with this. Oops. Where? What's on what layer? God damn it. Photoshop is so janky sometimes. Okay. So we got our formula for the trajectory. <clears throat> um, all right. Hope that made sense. This is like the first time we actually did algebra, like properly, a lot of algebra. <laughs> and a little bit of calculus, imagine that. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, I presume you want to see this implemented in code, right? Yep. These are our trajectory or all trajectories? Um, pretty much all trajectories that have a general, that have this format where you just have a simple gravity uh, constant. Um, <clears throat> so, um, this actually works using vectors too. Um, and so there's, there's nothing, um, we, we kind of define this using, um, just using a single variable, but you can use this with vectors as well. Um, and so, so we can, we can just straight up implement this. <clears throat> um, okay. This are, this are trajectories. Um, this is a trajectory. Yes. Um, Remember, we're setting up an initial position, an initial velocity, and then we have gravity, right? Which is our acceleration. Um, we can call it A0 to be consistent, but it's the same acceleration across the whole thing. Well, you, you, you look disappointed that this was trajectories. Are you, <laughs> what, did you expect something else or? Um, Okay, so these are our like initial conditions, and then we solved for what that equation would look like, right? Um, all right, let's implement this. Let's just get into, do it in code. Um, I'm gonna put it in the scripts folder this time. Uh, green object trajectory okay and then uh, we add our trajectory script And go back and forth to between Unity and Writer to make Writer realize that the script exists. Okay. Um, let's let's now set up our trajectory. Trajectory. Um, so we want some way to get the initial position, the initial velocity, and the acceleration. Uh, the acceleration is relatively straightforward. If we just want to use Unity's uh, acceleration, um, we can just define that here. Um, let's call it, let's call it a just to be consistent. Right, a zero, or maybe acceleration. Uh, so this is just physics dot gravity. Uh, because gravity in Unity is a vector, so you can set the gravity to point in any direction and at any magnitude. Uh, and so that's our acceleration. Uh, and then, <clears throat> and then we need the um, uh, we need the initial position, right? So the initial position uh, should probably say uh, start position, or or just position. Maybe that's okay. Uh, that's going to be transform.position because I, I just want to be able to move this around in Unity to easily test this. Uh, and then the velocity, that's kind of up to us how we want to set that up. Uh, so maybe I want to 
Uh, maybe I want to launch it along the um, x-axis or the um, z-axis. I guess either is fine. Let's do the x-axis. So I want the x-axis to be the direction, uh, and I want a um, I want to be able to specify a um, parameter for for the launch speed. And so, so maybe we'll we'll make that a public property. I mean, maybe we'll make it a range. <clears throat> um, so, launch speed. And so then our initial acceleration, uh, or sorry, initial velocity vector, uh, that is going to be transform dot right, which is the, again, the this axis right here, the red one. Um, and we multiply that by our launch speed. All right. Um, and then we can just define, um, we can just write the equation. So, so public vector three, get point over time. And then we do return uh, our initial position plus our velocity times time plus our acceleration um, divided by two times um, time squared. I believe that was our I believe that was our trajectory. Just gotta double check. Yes. So there's a there's a factor of uh, two here that we need to keep in mind. Um, and so that's the that's the equation for trajectory. Now we can get a point in a trajectory over time, where we just supply the the time value here, and then we get the position. Um, but we might want to also be able to draw this. Um, so we we could go back to our trusted on draw gizmos. Um, Uh, and then we want to draw this trajectory over some span of time. Um, so probably easiest to use is the either just draw individual line segments or we can use a polyline. Um, either is fine. Um, we can use a polyline this time because it's it's cute. Um, okay. Um, so then we can just like specify how detailed we want this curve to be. Cause if we're drawing it as individual lines, we could just subdivide it however much we want, but maybe that's a bad idea. Um, so, so let's just set it to some, some reasonable number, maybe 80, 80 or something. Let's call it detail. Right, and then we supply the points to this uh, list. Um, and that's uh, the T value is going to be um, I divided by detail minus one uh, as a flip. Um, so generally, if you want a percentage of like a value representing a percentage of a for loop, um, if you want the last iteration to hit one exactly, you have to subtract one for your uh, count. Uh, if you wanted to not hit one, then you would omit that uh, and cast this to a float. Um, so generally, you would do this for things that are cyclical, like when we were drawing our clock. Um, then we don't want to have two samples at the top, right? We only want one sample at the top when we're going all the way around the circle. Um, but in this case, we want to go, at, go to exactly one because we have two endpoints, right? And so we need to reduce the detail by one as a float. And so this also casts it to a float. Um, just a classic off by one thing to keep in mind. Um, Okay, uh, and then we we just uh, we can clear this first, and then we do we add a point in our list of points, um, and we add get point at time t. 
Uh, and so now this only goes from zero to one. Uh, so this will show us the trajectory over one second. Um, so we could add a add a thing for, for the draw duration as well. For the trajectory, just in case we want to draw it for, for like how far would it go in, in three seconds or whatever. Uh, so then, then we can just do floats time equals uh, t times draw duration. And then we'll pass time into get point. Uh, and then we need to draw the line. We, we've just uh, specified points. And there is a handles draw a, a polyline. Um, why does this only take an array? That is dumb. It should be able to take a list. Um, well, whatever. We'll just do it manually, I guess. Um, what? List dot two array. I mean, you can do two array. Um, the thing is that I specifically wanted to avoid allocations, and that's why I use a list that's defined outside. Uh, but if I do two array, I'm going to allocate every frame, and I'm going to just generate garbage. Um, and so, so that it, it's. I don't want to generate garbage. <laughs> I've become very sensitive to that as of late. That's why that's why I'm not doing new lists or doing conversion like that. But okay. Let's just let's just draw let's just do the regular gizmo so draw line. Um Okay. Um, cool. So all we're doing now is we're sampling our trajectory along 80 points from zero to draw duration. And then we're drawing lines connecting those. So now we're basically just drawing this function. Um, yeah, that should work. Let's see if it does. We do have a trajectory. Look at this little little thing. Let's increase our launch speed. That's a that's a trajectory right there. We can we can rotate it, and we can see that the trajectory is updating. Move it around. The origin changes, and it's working. And so this is using. Um, so now we basically defined a trajectory um, using a predetermined path, um, and if you were to um, actually, let's do that in practice. Let's actually, let's actually make sure that we got this right. I'm going to, I'm going to create a rigid body. Um, and, uh, we're going to make sure that the rigid body matches. We're going to add a cube. Um, and then let's, let's make it a little smaller because this is a very large cube. Um, a little bit smaller. Okay, let's add a rigid body to this one. Um, and then in our, I guess it could be a child object, trajectory um, in awake. We're gonna we're gonna throw this rigid body. So we're gonna do rigid body dot velocity equals the velocity that we define in our trajectory. So we're just going to we're going to set the velocity in a week and then this rigid body should follow exactly the same path. Um, and if it doesn't, I, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> um, OK, so Let's see if this works. Are you ready? Do you have your popcorn popcorn ready for this? this maybe I'll fail. Maybe this won't work. <laughs> it might actually not work. <laughs> okay, I'm unpausing this now. Hell yeah, exactly the same path. Isn't that neat? Isn't that isn't that cool? We just we just we just did math and we got the exact same path that the rigid body flew. Um and so that this is just gonna this is just gonna work. Um, we can change the launch speed. 
draw for a little bit longer. Uh, maybe we can, can even be spicy and rotate this a little bit uh, or throw it uh, over to a specific, throw it, throw it over there. Um, okay, and then we hit play. And then we unpause and it's flying exactly along that trajectory. That's kind of cute, right? We just predefined that path. Um, and so this would basically be like one way that you can calculate trajectories. Um, it's useful if you want to make like a game where you have to aim using some sort of tra trajectory like that. Um, if you're making a worms game, for instance, which I believe you did before, um, you could literally visualize the trajectory of a projectile while firing or aiming uh, if you want some cheats, right? Um, yeah, and so so this is this is trajectories. Um, okay. Um, we're actually coming up on our next break. Um, let's see, I think there was a question, right? Um, you said never mind. Okay. You tried doing this with worms, but never got it to work. Um, okay. I don't know what didn't work in that case, but do you now know what you should do to make it work? Or was that more of a, or was it a question? Okay. Um, still don't really understand what this does. Um, collision mask. Um, oh yeah, that, that is not regarding my lecture. I mean, I can explain it if you want to. Um, Um, okay. Any questions about trajectories? I hope this is readable. I don't know how much I can zoom out and still leave it readable. Me and my friend were playing around with Universe Sandbox a couple of weeks ago and was showing the expected trajectory for the objects. Is that too complex? Uh, what do you mean by too complex? Too complex for what? Um... Like, is it similar to this, or was there a hella ad on maths for the physics and stuff? Um, I mean, so in a simulated world, um, so it, it kind of depends. Like, like there, there are lots of, like, classical problems like that. They're, I think they're called the n-body problem. Um, um, so n-body problem is when you have... Um, gravitational pull from several different um, points of sources, right? Um, so if you want to read up on that, that's the n-body problem. Um, so there are some special cases, like the two-body problem has like a, a nice solution for, for two bodies that are gravitationally affecting each other. Uh, but I think as soon as you get to the three-body problem, um, it's no longer like deterministic, I think. Um, or maybe it is deterministic for the three-body problem. Um, but then I think four-body problem becomes complicated. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th this is a thing you can look up if you want to do that. Uh, the other thing you can do, um, 
like in this case, we have a function to directly evaluate a, a point on the trajectory, uh, which is kind of a luxurious thing to have um, because sometimes um, because sometimes the functions that you have are so complicated that you can't just sample it at any time um, at any time, right? So then you would have to simulate it uh, up until that time point, which can be really expensive. Um, we need a line render to show it in game, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Or you can use shapes, uh, a vector graphics library for Unity. Um, but yes, you can use a line render. Oh, you're trying to draw from the child object. The position wouldn't match, right? Does yours work when the script is on a child with an offset? Um, the way that I'm drawing this right now is that I'm drawing this in world space. Uh, all of these points are world space, and so they're not relative to. Um, yeah, they're not relative to any object right now. It's all world space. Um, How would you do it in local space? Um, well, it's the same formula. It's just that all of the inputs have to be in local space, right? If we wanted to come out of the barrel of a weapon, um, well, that depends on what you mean by doing it in local space, I suppose. Um, you can do this in world space and still have it come out of the barrel of a weapon, right? That's what I'm doing right now. Um, so moving this around, the trajectory starts at that position, right? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we, we should be on, on break right now. We're doing break until 11.10. Um, okay, I need to make tea and I should go to the bathroom. My tea is cold and almost out. Whew. Um... There you go, trajectory. Okay. Um, tea, I'm making tea. How's the YouTube chat? Here's a background noise. I'm making tea. 
let me, let me run my kettle. It's important, okay? It fuels me. I can watch the salad in the meantime. the same issue as Adam. Uh, what is the issue? A sad line. Um, we're launching it along the x-axis, so I would rotate the object um, so that the x-axis is pointing upwards a little bit. Should we transform that right? Okay, I'm gonna get tea. Is this an approximation because it almost looks off? Um, shouldn't be, no. Uh, keep in mind that it's probably the perspective projection. Um, so you might want to... Oh, he, is he going to stretch? Is he going to... No, he's just walking away. Okay. Um, no, this, this should not be an approximation. This is about as accurate as you can get. Um, but I think it's... Uh, if you f if you make sure the rotation is uh, flattened, and then if you look at it from directly side on, then I believe it should be fully accurate. Does your rigid body have drag? It could be that. Because um, currently the our model has no drag at all. Um, yeah, so make sure drag is set to zero. 
Um, okay. Uh, if there is a difference, um, even if you have those parameters, uh, I just have to look look at the voice. If there is a difference when you use those parameters, then it's not the trajectory, the math that we did that's inaccurate. Then it's probably unity that's inaccurate, <laughs> uh, because quite often in rigid bodies, when you do like a real time simulation, uh, you do have a lot of approximations. Um, the formula we have does not have approximations. Um, it's about as accurate as you can get using floating point precision. Um, what's the difference, difference between drag and angular drag? Um, drag is positional drag. So, um, so if you if you if you're moving an object uh, and you want it to like slow down, like positionally. Like you impulse and then slow down, impulse and then slow down. Uh, that's drag, and that's the um, that's just a positional drag. Angular drag is for um, rotation. So if you want the rotation to slow down af after you give it a torque impulse, or you set the angular velocity and you want it to like slow down, that's angular drag. Um, otherwise, if you set the angular velocity, it's going to just continue to spin forever, uh, unless you have angular drag. Um, yeah. Um, looks kind of good from the side. Um, I guess if you want to test it, you could pause when it's near the end. See how accurate it is? Yeah, it is a little bit off. But uh, that has to be Unity then. Uh, I imagine there's generally a lot of like shortcuts you take when it comes to... Um, uh, there are a lot of shortcuts you take when it comes to physics. Um, it could also be if your line is low detail, but I wouldn't expect these to perfectly match um, the further you go on. I think they would go a little bit off. Um, sorry, I should have shown should have shown this instead of salad flopping. Uh, it is a little bit off for me as well if I pause it at the very end here. Um, but I think that is um, I think that is expected. Uh, but I think the the approximation is a unity, not your trajectory function. Uh, your trajectory is more accurate than Unity's simulation, because the the simulation is doing it discreetly, like step by step, um, and so so that's why it's a little bit off. Um, what's up with salad? <laughs> what happened to salad? <laughs> what did what did he do? He he just he just flopped. Uh, if it's really important that our object follows the trajectory, I guess we could change the position manually rather than use the rigid body. Um, yes, uh, keep in mind that your trajectory doesn't take collision into account, but you could do that, yeah. You could make the rigid body like follow the trajectory until it hits something. You could totally do that. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, um, one thing that might actually be off, I wonder if there's some sort of ghostly frame where maybe the rigid body simulates a tiny bit for one frame. Um, so maybe we need to set the position as well. Or if you just had it offset from the start. Um, so maybe this will be more accurate because I, I deviated a little bit too early i'm, I'm kind of surprised if unity is that inaccurate um hmm i'm bad at pressing buttons yeah it does move one little bit um it's still a little bit off. Hmm. I'm not sure. Um. Okay. 
Uh, but the remember the the thing we did before with the camera, um, where we had our movement here. Um, using like time dot delta time like this to do all of our acceleration and the like simulating our position. This is less accurate. This is an approximation. Um, and the physics engine is unity in unity is working in a similar way because you, the, the physics engine can only work frame by frame. It doesn't have like knowledge about the future because all of the conditions could change at any moment. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's a little bit off um, because the the physics are working on a discrete um, method, um, but this trajectory is working on an explicit path that is like mathematically super precise. Um, and so, so yeah, if anything is off, it's unities. Um, if you really want the thing to follow the trajectory, um, I would either like simulate the rigid body or set the rigid body's position along the trajectory like explicitly um and then as soon as it hits something you stop following the trajectory um so you could do that um or you kind of do the the other way around um you you simulate the trajectory uh using time dot delta time uh, or using time steps rather um, so then you would use the fixed time step to simulate the path. Um, but that makes the trajectory get point function. Then get point would actually have to simulate the physics up until that point for every time you call it. Um, I think that would also work, but then that's going to be more expensive to evaluate, right? Uh, but then you would literally simulate it, right? Um, can you show how to make it move along the line through code? Um, sure. Um, I just need to get my tea because we're kind of in a pseudo break right now and I'm going to get my tea and then we're going to leave break and then, then we can do that. Okay, um, it was a longer break than I thought we would do, but it's, it was a pseudo break, okay? It, it's fine. Oh, Salad is moving. He's, oh, he's scratching. He's scratching. Good job, Salad. Good job. Yeah. salad so good. What a good, good boy. We found a box. It's in the box. Okay, um, <laughs> with salad in the box, I believe we're ready to continue. <clears throat> okay, let's see, what's some questions? Um, so the first one uh, that we noticed was that the, the physics of the Unity's physics engine doesn't fully follow the trajectory. Like the, the further you go forward in time, um, it's gonna be a little bit uh, off. 
Um, and so that is that is likely uh, because Unity's uh, physics engine and basically every physics engine ever, um, they are not deterministic and they. Hey. What? What? Salad is staring at me. Do you want to hop up? Come on, Salad. Hey, come on. Come on up then. I think he wants to be my lap. He was sitting next to me and he went. Okay, um, so every physics engine generally like simulates in discrete steps because they have to. Um, it is um, it is just the, the fact of physics engine is that they can't predict everything because that would lead to like a permutation explosion of cases. Um, and so you just have to approximate. And so our trajectory is likely more accurate than Unity's physics engine uh, because Unity's physics engine is working in like discrete time steps. It, it's simulating step by step. Um, so uh, someone asked, how do we make the physics object follow the trajectory? Um, uh, uh, would it be more accurate if we cranked up physics calculations frame rate? Uh, it might actually be more accurate. I would guess that it's more accurate if we increase it. Uh, but that's a good question. Um, so where is our, where's our physics frame rate? Is it in time? Fixed time step, okay. Let's set it to a thousand frames per second. Let's try that instead. Um, ow, ow, ow. Uh, and that is <laughs> way more accurate. So yes, um, cranking up the physics frame, it does make it more accurate, which, which is what we would expect, right? <clears throat> um, doesn't that also affect frame rates? Um, it if, so this, that's, we changed the physics frame rate. That's what we did. And we made the physics frame rate to a thousand um, physics frames per second. Um, so that's that's what we changed. Um, should probably set it back so that we're not. Let's let's do a hundred. Let, let's compromise instead of a <clears> thousand. <throat> but if it needs to calculate more often, won't the performance be worse? Yes, it is expensive to do this. Um, so like you can't just always crank your physics up to a thousand fps. Um, so it is going to be more expensive, but in some games, like my game Flowstorm, I could crank it up to a thousand because I'm using 2D physics and I just have one physics object. And I just needed that one physics object to be really accurate. And so there was no, no real point for me to just not do that because I needed the accuracy. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And so the question was, how do we make it follow the trajectory? Um, like if we want to make it like follow it accurately instead of like launching it and leaving it to its own devices salad. Um, then I guess there are many different ways we can do that. We can either explicitly just set its position and velocity every like frame or maybe physics frame. Um, we could, um, we could like correct it every now and then, like every like, Every 0.1 seconds, we, we adjust it a little bit to make sure that it's on the correct course. Uh, there are many different ways of doing it. Um, but effectively, we would, we would salad, do not. <clears throat> um, but effectively, we would do something along the lines of um, uh, in a uh, fixed update. Here, we would basically set the position and the velocity um, I guess velocity might not act. No, it does matter. Yeah, we would set position and velocity directly based off of our uh, function right here. Um, I need a decoy toy for salad. Here you go. Um, so we, we would set the velocity directly um, and the position directly every frame. So in this case, we would just call uh, get point um, at time dot time. 
Uh, or actually, we would probably, I, I'm not sure if we might want to use move position. Uh, oh, move towards position. No, I think it's fine to set rigid body dot position. Uh, just keep in mind that you don't want to set transform dot position um, when you're dealing with rigid bodies like this. Because um, then the physics are going to get a little wonky. Uh, and so now we need to also get the velocity at a specific point. Um, so we can we can kind of just make that here. So get velocity. And now you've been equipped with the power of learning how to differentiate functions, right? So you know how to differentiate this. Uh, position, that's a constant, gets deleted. Uh, this is just a factor of t, so we just get velocity. And this, again, remember, this is our initial velocity, the launch velocity. Um, and then for this one, it is cubed, right? So this is t, or sorry, squared. So this is t squared. So we take that uh, two, move it down, um, and then we reduce this by one. Um, and of course, the, the division by two and multiply by two cancels out. Um, and so we're left with this. So this is the equation for the velocity. Um, OK. What? And remember, these are the derivatives. In other words, they're functions where you get velocity at a specific time. Uh, the velocity here, that's called vel, is just the initial velocity. Um, and this is the initial position. Um, and so this is the velocity at a specific time. Um, so it's good to remember that. Um, so now we basically do the same thing here. We do get velocity, time dot time. Um, so this time variable, um, if you want to make this in a proper game, this would be time since launch, right? Um, so you would keep track of when you launch your object. Um, now it's just when the game starts. So you, you would replace this with a, a relative time value rather than the absolute time value. Um, okay. Um, yeah. And so I think this will work. Uh, one thing, when you're simulating a rigid body like this, um, you might want to make sure that it's not affected by gravity. Um, and so kind of a, kind of the, the standard way of doing this is to, um, set the rigid body to kinematic. Um, and so that, that means we're kind of like, um, animating it ourselves instead of letting the physics engine do it, but it still has collisions and that kind of stuff. It, other objects will still interact with this. Uh, and then you would do something like, um, <clears throat> when it hits something, we, we turn kin kinematic off. Yeah, and um, is kinematic means it won't uh, it won't be affected by gravity. Um, this cat, I swear to God. Um, kinematic means it won't simulate. Uh, we're turning off simulation, basically. Um, so we're just controlling it ourselves. Kinematic is a really really confusing name for this variable. Uh, it should be called like. Um, something else. It's just a terrible name. Um, hey, salad. Okay, salad is in full gremlin mode right now. Um, okay. So how do we move it along the line without Unity Physics? And would that be better? Um, so without Unity Physics, um, you would basically just not use a rigid body at all. Um, and then you would set the transform dot position, right? So then you ignore everything physics related. Um, you set the transform dot position, and you can do that in update instead. Um, and then whether or not that would be better depends on your use case. Um, because when you're just setting the position directly, this is going to happen no matter what, right? Uh, but if you're using a physics object, um, it all comes down to 
should it be interruptible by other physics objects? Uh, like, if should it be able to hit the ground? Uh, should it be? Should other colliders like be able to fly into it while it's simulating? Like that kind of stuff. Um, and so, so it all comes down to like how real time is your stuff? Um, like this is not going to take collision into account at all. Uh, so if you want collisions and react like reactions with other things, then you're going to have to use a rigid body. Um, it is of course possible to do stuff like you raycast uh, along this path. Um, and then you can raycast to detect surfaces and whatnot. So if it's just a, a single projectile that's very small, it doesn't, doesn't have like a big width or whatever, um, then, it, then it's relatively straightforward to just do a raycast trace along the uh, trajectory. Um, but yeah, so, so it kind of depends on your use case. Um, yeah, but this would work just as well. Uh, so this would, um, or wait, it would be the... We, we shouldn't move our, ourselves. That would, that, would, that would move the trajectory. Um, yeah, so this is going to do the same thing. <clears throat> and there we go. Okay. Uh, we have 30 minutes left uh, until we're basically done with all of the, the pre-planned lectures. Um, so I guess where would you want to move from here? Well, what, what, are, what are some last things you would like to, to know about trajectories or derivatives? Do you, have any, do you have any questions? How would you do X or Y or... Um, how to factor in drag? Um, that gets complicated. Uh, there, there are, uh, yeah, the equation becomes uglier the more factors and things you take into account. Um, I think it might be on this this one. Um, yeah, where's the where's the one with drag? Air resistance. Here we go. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, it gets a little bit more complicated, but there's different types of drag. Uh, some of them are going to hit like differential equations and it's going to be really gross. Um, and it, it's, it's just a mess. And so, so just, <laughs> it's, it gets messy. Um, so for these things, it might just be easier to just simulate it frame by frame. Um, as soon as you do these like predetermined paths, uh, then some of them can get complicated if you have a really complicated simulation. Um, yeah. Uh, you said something yesterday about simulating buoyancy. Is it possible to talk about that in the time we have left? We could do that, yeah. Uh, how would you determine trajectory if intersecting with the ground using a line renderer? Um, the line renderer has nothing to do with collision, so the line renderer itself is just for drawing. Um, if you want to determine if it's hitting the ground, um, you would raycast along uh, every step of this trajectory. Um, so you would kind of kind of get some points in the trajectory and then um, do a short raycast ahead of time. If it if it doesn't hit anything, uh, then you can move forward, right? Um, so if you have your uh, trajectory, um, and then you have some ground somewhere, uh, then what you would do is basically just do tiny little raycasts uh, every uh, every time. Uh, you move forward, and if there's if you hit something, then you you hit something. If you didn't, you just continue the trajectory, do another raycast, do another raycast, do another raycast, and so forth. Um, yeah. So if you if you just want to like check for something along that, um, uh, okay. Buoyancy. Uh, buoyancy is. Um, can get either very complicated or easy depending on how you set things up. Um, the uh, the gist of it is basically you have some water surface, right? Or some liquid, I guess. Um, and then you have some object. Um, yeah, and so, so buoyancy is basically a force that is applied uh, to the object, like upwards. Um, and that force is directly proportional to the uh, amount of water displaced here. Um, 
And so you would basically have to work out like how much of the mesh is under uh, underwater, and then you would add a force based on that. Um, yeah, but it gets a little complicated because the the force position can vary, right? Um, so if you have a uh, if you have a plank that's like this, um, sorry, should make a this is a better one like that. If you have a plank like this, uh, you obviously don't want it to just move directly upwards, right? You don't want it to like float and move to this position. Um, and so you would have to add the force specifically at this location. Um, so that if you add a force here, that would also like um, incur an angular uh, force to it as well. Um, so it gets a little complicated with that, but that's basically basically what you need to do. Um, um, but you can always like approximate it. Sometimes when you do buoyancy, um, you have like uh, little points, and then you just simulate these points. Uh, so if this is underwater, you'd like check the distance to the top or something, and then you add a force at that point and add a little force at that point, and then it's gonna also incur the angular velocity. Um, okay, uh, mesh generation. We could talk about that as well. Um, yeah, do you wanna talk about mesh generation? Um, creating meshes in, in code? There, I did add a few assignments on that, so it's a good thing to learn. Um, okay, that's going to be the, the last thing then. Um, boys? Um, all right. So let's say that you want to generate a mesh. Maybe we want to, want to generate the, the most simple mesh of all, the triangle. Or maybe let's do the quad. Um, so a mesh is built out of uh, vertices and triangles. Um, there are other things in the mesh, but for now we can just ignore those. Um, so when you make a mesh, you define vertices. So vertices are these points here. Um, and so usually you have a list of vertex positions, um, just like a polyline, right? We just have a bunch of points. Um, so you're... Um, So your vertices um, is basically a um, vector three uh, array or a list. Either is fine. Um, so so you specify each position of each vertex. Now each vertex has an index because of their position in the array. Um, because you know how arrays work. You have elements and you have element zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Uh, and so each vertex is going to be associated with a number that's going to be its index. And that just depends on the order you define them in. Um, so this is going to be the, the index for each vertex. Um, and then you also need to define the triangles, right? We Because meshes are generally built out of triangles. And so, so how do we define triangles? Uh, well, triangles are... Uh, defined by specifying which indices should be connected. Um, so if you, uh, let's just go triangles. So the triangles array is an array of just integers. Um, and all you really do is that you specify which three vertices should be connected. Uh, and so maybe I want a, um, so if I want to connect uh, this triangle right here, if I want this to be a triangle in the mesh, uh, then what I would do is that I would specify these three indices. Uh, so I can go uh, three, zero, one. And so if I do that, three, zero, one, and we've now defined our first triangle. Um, and then if we want to define the next triangle, we can do that here. Uh, and then that one, that triangle, we want to form along vertex three, vertex one, and vertex two. Um, so we just continue this. Um, so in this case, it would be uh, three, uh, one, and two. And so triangles, the triangles array is just a list of uh, indices for which vertices should be connected. Um, 
And yes, the order is important. Um, so, so triangles have a front side and a back side. Um, and so if you, if you do three, zero, one, uh, they're normal or the, the direction that the face is going to point is in this direction. Um, how do I know that? Well, unity is left-handed, right? And again, you can use your left hand. And if you curl your fingers and you make this little thumbs up, uh, the curl of your fingers, if the curl of your fingers is the, the order you define the vertices in, then your thumb is going to be the normal of that surface. That's going to be the, the face normal. Um, so if we go back to, to here, um, we define them in this order, right? Um, like, like this. So we had three, zero, one. So that means the normal is going to point in this direction by the left-handed rule. Uh, if we did it in the opposite direction, it would point downwards instead. Um, so that also follows the left-hand rule. So then we would have to do a thumbs down uh, to curl uh, from three, one, zero. So then, then the face would point the other direction, right? Um, so we want to define it so that the normal is pointing in this direction. Um, one, three, zero, still left-handed. It's always left-handed, uh, but one, three, zero also makes this point in the same direction. Um, so three, zero, one, one, three, zero, um, or uh, zero, one, three. All of these would create the same triangle. Like, so, so they're basically equivalent. There's some technicalities where one of them might be faster for the GPU, but that's out of scope. Um, and so, yeah. And so, so it's only really like which order you're doing it in, right? Can it render both sides or is that only possible from the shader? Uh, that's, that, that's up to the shader, yeah. Um, the, but basically what you're defining here is which uh, direction should the front of this triangle point. Uh, but generally, uh, most shaders are use something called back face calling, which means that the back side is not going to draw. Uh, but you can turn off back side calling and then it's going to draw both sides. Um, but yeah, so, so the order you d define these in determine which direction it's going to be the front of that face, right? Um, and so this is how you define them. And then obviously the, the other one, three, one, two, is defined in three, one, two. Uh, so that is in this direction and through the left-hand rule, we can then know that that's the face normal of that face, right? Um, okay. Um, and so that's how you define, define vertices and triangles. Um, there are a shitload of other things in meshes, but this is kind of all you need to know for the assignments. Um, you can also define the vertex normals, which are going to be used in shading. Um, so you might want to do those as well, um, but you don't have to. Uh, you can take a few shortcuts. Um, but, the, but each vertex also has a normal direction. Uh, in this case, for a quad, it's, they're just going to point upwards. Um, and so you could define those as well. As well, those are just vector three. Uh, those are, those are a vector three array, just like the vertices. Um, so we could could define those if you want to. Um, and so so these. Why did I erase the one thing I wanted to keep? Um, Um, must have misunderstood something because this is giving me index out of range errors. Also, what is the submesh? Uh, submesh is, um, you can have multiple sets of triangles in your mesh. Um, and so if you want to assign multiple materials to an object in Unity, you need multiple sets of triangles and those are called submeshes. Um, let's see. Uh, you're getting index out of range because your triangles list, you're trying to access an element in the list that doesn't exist. Uh, you're going to have to use triangles.add instead of accessing an element in your triangles uh, list. Um, yeah. Um, oh yeah, both of your lists, uh, you should use add instead of accessing the index. Um, okay. Uh, do you want to see this in practice? Should we just, should we make a mesh in Unity? Yes, okay. Um, 
All right. Let's make a mesh thingy. Uh, mesh generator. That's the name of our new script. Uh, when generating meshes like this, keep in track of your vertex in indices. Like these numbers right here is going to be absolutely crucial to everything you do. I highly recommend drawing everything you want to do procedurally. Um, draw the indices. Try to figure out how you set the, this up, ideally for your algorithm and your use case. Always, always, always draw. Um, you're going to get confused real fast as soon as you start doing more complex things. Um, and you just get this like triangle soup um, that's just really confusing or index out of range errors that, that is very common. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, so we want to be able to display this mesh. So I'm going to add a mesh filter and a mesh render. Um, and we are going to assign a material. Um, I guess just a default material. <clears throat> um, okay. How do we want to generate this mesh? Um, we could do it every frame in on draw gizmos if we're feeling spicy. Uh, we could do it in awake. Uh, we could actually we could do it using a um, context menu. Why not? Learn some learn some more things. Um, you can add a context menu to any function in Unity. Um, so this could be like generate mesh, uh, and this will add a menu so you can right click on your components uh, and you'll be able to uh, call this function in Unity. Um, all right. Um, so let's try it out, make sure that it works. We got our, got our console and then we can right click our script and then we now have a button that says generate mesh. And if you click that, we get our, get our log message. Um, and so just a nice way to, to just inject functionality into the editor. Um, all right. And so what we want to do is we want to generate, let, let's generate a quad mesh, I guess, cause it's easy. Um, I don't know if we should do like a super complex example. Um, so we're going to need um, a list of vertices, right? And we're going to need a list of triangles. And those are just going to be indices. Uh, and we're going to have, we're going to need a mesh. It's the mesh itself, right? Uh, so we're going to cache that. Um, Boys. Uh, and so if mesh is a null, uh, we're going to create a new mesh. Um, new mesh, straight up. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, this is a Unity uh, object. Uh, and Unity objects, um, as in they are objects that are inheriting from Unity engine dot object. Um, other things like that is like materials. Uh, so like new material. Um, so like any, any assets you have in Unity are also Unity objects. And the reason that's important is because the garbage collector is not going to collect this garbage um, because you created an asset. Um, and so it's very, very easy to accidentally leak meshes, as in you're going to create meshes over and over and over and over again um, accidentally. Um, and so, so just be careful not to just create a mesh every frame. Um, because that's gonna that's gonna just flood your unity and you're gonna run out of RAM. Um, kittens are playing pretty violently. Um, okay, so we're, we need to make sure that it's it's actually null before we create a new mesh. Just just to make sure that we're not just over creating meshes. Um, 
Okay, and if it is, uh, if we do create a new mesh, we want to assign it to the mesh filter. So we're just going to do get component uh, mesh filter dot shared mesh equals mesh. Um, in general, when using uh, mesh filters and mesh renderers, uh, use the ones that are called shared mesh and shared material. Uh, those refer to the actual asset that it's using. If you do dot mesh, uh, this actually creates a copy of the mesh, uh, which is very easy to accidentally do when you don't want to. Um, so just, just keep in mind which one you're using. Um, so shared mesh basically means mesh asset. Um, and then the one that's just mesh means mesh copy. Um, okay. So we're assigning a mesh to the mesh filter after we create it, uh, but we're not actually doing anything with the mesh itself. We need to do something with that data. Um, okay, so our vertices, uh, what coordinates do we want to use here? I guess we can just use the same coordinates as we just drew. Um, so, um, where's my pen? Uh, so we have our, our usual unity axes. We have y here. Wah, zooming is hard. Uh, so we have the y-axis. Um, and then we have the x-axis and the uh, z-axis. And so we can we can kind of decide like what plane we want this, um, this quad to be in, if it should be on the um, xy plane or the xz plane and so forth. That's kind of up to us, right? Um, so if we want to match it in this case, the way we drew these coordinates, um, then we would have to uh, use the XZ plane, right? Um, okay, so we can just explicitly define them right here. Um, so new vector three. So we're starting with this one. So let's put that at, so that's going to be negative X because uh, it's on the negative side of the X axis and negative on the Z axis. That's going to be, uh, let's do a negative one and the zero on the y axis and negative one there. Um, okay. I forget the syntax for, for this. I think, hold up. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, and then the next vertex is going to be this one. So that one is at positive uh, z. That's the only difference between those two flipping that to positive. Next vertex is going to be here. We're flipping it on the x-axis. So we flip the x to the other side. Um, boys, chill. And the last one, we're um, flipping along the z-axis. So we're flipping the z-value. Uh, and there we go. Whoops. Um, now we have some vertices. Um, one thing you might want to do if you're as pedantic as I am about code alignment, uh, you can actually type plus. Um, so unary plus is an operator that basically does nothing, um, but it can be nice to make your code aligned because then you can see the, the signs align like this. All the stars are aligned. Isn't that, isn't that neat? Um, um, okay. And so we now have our vertices, but we don't have triangles. So we need to define our triangles. Okay, and that one we've basically already done the work for. Uh, we just type them here, right? We have three, zero, one. That's our first triangle pointing in that direction. Uh, and then we have three, one, two, which is our second triangle also pointing in that direction. Uh, so three, zero, one, three, one, two. Three, zero, one, uh, three, one, two. Um, and that's, that's basically it, right? Like those are the the triangles we want to use. Uh, and then we need to apply this to the mesh. Uh, so in case we have some old data, we might want to clear it first. And then we want to do mesh dot uh, set vertices. And then we pass the vertices into there. And then we do mesh dot set triangles. And then we pass the triangles into there. Um, it also wants a sub mesh. You can just set it to zero. Um, sub meshes is basically, you can have multiple sets of triangles. Um, if you have a mesh in Unity where you assign multiple materials, that means that it has multiple sub-meshes. Um, yeah, and so, so set triangles, um, we're, we just want to default to zero there. 
Um, okay, and then um, the mesh dot, uh, we might want to call mesh dot recalculate normals. Uh, recalculate normals kind of auto calculates um, which direction thinks the vertex normal should point. Um, but in our case, we could actually just like define the normals ourselves, which is going to be faster too. So let's do the normals. Uh, and the direction of the normals um, in this case is very simple. Um, it is just the, uh, the y-axis, right? So this is going to be uh, vector three dot up. Uh, that's going to be the, the direction of the normal. Um, so, so all of these are just going to be um, vector three dot up. Um, Okay, so instead of auto calculating the normals, we're going to assign them, set normals, and normals. Okay, um, and I think that's it. I think this should do it. I think this will generate our quad. Uh, I guess we can, we can go to Unity and double check. And so we have our mesh generator, uh, and then we right click and do generate mesh. And now we have a mesh, our own Homebrewed mesh. Is isn't that cute? We we did it. Um, yeah. We have a we 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 made a mesh. You don't need three D artists anymore, right? You can just you can just do this. Just just write a character using vector threes. Um, okay. Oh, so that's the basic of mesh generation. Um, any questions about that? We have meshes at home. And so then obviously in this case, we could just explicitly write the values, uh, but quite often uh, these are uh, generated by something, right? Like we could literally like take our trajectory function and make a for loop that like generates vertices at specific points in the trajectory. So we could do stuff like that as well. Um, so, so there's, there's a lot of things you can do with this, especially as soon as you start creating the for loops and you like, um, yeah, just do, doing all of these things like that. Can we do it iteratively? Uh, what do you mean by iteratively in this case? With like a for loop, do what with, with a for loop? Um, I mean, yes, but in this case, the, the, the triangle or the setup of the mesh is pretty simple, right? Um, and so we would just have to do the same thing, but with a for loop. Um, but like, th there's nothing like special about these, uh, they're just lists. And how you uh, populate that data is up to you, as you can absolutely do that with um, uh, with your uh, with for loops. Uh, so when we set triangles to three zero one, is that setting them to vertices index three zero and one? Yes. Um, how do you fix rotation? Uh, what do you mean by fix? Uh, I didn't quite follow why we set the normals. Doesn't that follow from the, from the triangles? Um, so there's a difference between what's called vertex normals and there's a difference between um, face normals. Uh, so face normals uh, don't really, uh, are only implicitly defined by the winding order of each triangle. Uh, so the face normals is just the direction that the face is pointing. Um, so the direction of this face um, and this face is fully determined by the order in which we define these, right? So that's face normals. Um, but then we also have vertex normals. Uh, so those are the things you see here. Uh, so these are the, the direction that the vertex is quote unquote pointing. Um, and this is mostly used in shading. Um, so if you, if we look at a mesh from side on, let's say we have a, um, a very low poly cylinder and you imagine we have some vertices here. Um, then I'm gonna duplicate that for future purposes. Um, 
And so what the normals basically tell you is which direction uh, should we shade this as? Um, and so if this is pointing in that direction there, and then here, we're making the normal point in this direction, and here it's pointing in this direction, and here it's pointing in this direction. Uh, when you're shading this, when you're doing shaders, this is, I guess we have the shader course later, but this is something we're gonna talk about during the shader course. Um, but the, the vertex normals are interpolated across the triangle. Uh, so when you're shading this, as in shining a light on it, and we see the light fall off and everything, um, this surface is gonna look smooth. Uh, it's gonna look like this surface um, has the normal defined there, right? Uh, so this will actually approximate a soft shape like this, um, if I'm able to draw a soft shape. Uh, so this will look like a curved surface uh, when you uh, look at it, um, when you look at how lighting affects it. Um, and so this is how Unity's uh, like built-in primitives work. So if you, uh, if we create a uh, cylinder, uh, delete the collider, like you can see that it's very low poly, right? You can see that this is like not a very high resolution, uh, but the shading looks smooth. Well, kind of smooth, right? Uh, and the way that that's achieved is specifically because um, the ver vertex here has one normal and it's pointing out in this direction. And then it's blending the normals in between so that the normal direction uh, looks smooth, right? So kind of smoothly interpolates like this. Um, and you can, sort of, if you remember slurp, that's basically what it's doing. Uh, but it's it's cheaper to do just lerp and normalize. Um, but but yeah, and so that's, that's how smooth shading works. That's why meshes look smooth, uh, because you have vertex normals like this. Uh, if you wanted to not have a soft shading, um, if you wanted to not have a, a smooth shading, you actually have to duplicate this vertex um, because now you need to have two normals at this point because you need normals like this, right? Um, and so this uh, is usually called hard edges. Sometimes it's called split normals, but that's a bit, bit more of a programmer or tech art, art term. Um, and so, so now it, this is gonna be shaded as if it's completely flat and this is gonna be shaded like this is completely flat. And so you get a hard boundary here. So that's why there would be a hard edge um, at this point. Um, and so, so this is kind of the, the, the how you achieve smooth versus um, hard edges. It's funny how flat shaded models have lesser vertices. Yes, <laughs> it's kind of a, a, an interesting artifact of how this architecture is when set up. Um, and so, if you want hard edges, or if you want any data on this vertex to be different, um, you have to um, duplicate that vertex. Um, yeah, and so, so that's. That's uh, the difference between soft edges versus hard edges. Um, all right. Um, okay. I hope that made sense. Um, any other questions? Did I miss a question? Uh, oh yeah, so we were just wondering about the normals. Uh, yeah, so, so that's the difference between the, the face normal and the vertex normal. So, so vertex normals are used for shading, uh, generally. Uh, and then the, the face normals are just implicit from the, uh, from the triangle uh, order, right? Uh, okay. I have a few questions regarding the assignments. Uh, is it about how the what what the assignment is? Because if so, that might be useful for others to hear too. Um, okay, yeah, go go for it. Ask questions. Um, we're kind of going over overtime, but that's okay. I think uh, we have no lectures after lunch this time. Um, but I will stick around. I will exist on Discord. Um, and then, um, and then I will, I will help you all out if you need help and I will be available. Um, uh, oh, you were asking about the triangulation, right? Um, and so, um, basically 
One of the assignments, uh, the one called convex polygon triangulation, um, I should bring up the, the things. Uh, this one. So the assignment is basically to uh, triangulate a set of 2D points. And what triangulate means is uh, in effectively create a mesh from these points. Um, and so, so basically what we did here is that we triangulated a quad mesh, right? Uh, we, we made a mesh uh, and then we created triangles that filled it in, right? So triangulate is the process of uh, dividing up a polygon area into triangles. Uh, so that's what that means. Um, so for convex polygon triangulation, uh, effectively create a mesh where you supply a set of vertices. Um, and so, so you just, maybe you make a public list or array of vertices. Uh, and then I want you to create a mesh from these vertices. Um, so it just like triangulates this whole thing. So it divides it up into, into triangles. Uh, that's what that is. That is the um, convex triangulation um, assignments. Uh, did that make sense? So basically what we just did here, but instead of just four points, you should be able to supply any number of points um, and then you should be able to triangulate it. Um, and your triangulation algorithm does not have to handle convex or concave uh, polygons. It only needs to be able to do this with uh, convex shapes. Um, yes, the, the more advanced one, quite significantly more advanced one, is the concave polygon triangulation. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to add a hint to this one as well, uh, because it, it might be tricky to figure out on your own. Um, yeah. But it's a fun challenge. Um, all right. Any other questions about the assignments? Or questions about derivatives or trajectories. We've kind of done derivatives, trajectories, uh, mesh generation. Um, anything else before we, before we head off for lunch? Uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, I, uh, I did add a bunch of assignments to the document that I've been linking a few times in, um, in Discord. It's also in the description of the YouTube video if you want, want a link to this. Um, some of these are much more difficult than others, uh, so I mark them by difficulty. Um, and so... Pick the ones that you want to do, like the, the concave polygon triangulation. This might take all of today and all of tomorrow to do, uh, depending on like your skill level, what you're comfortable with, and so forth. Um, and if you just want to do something that's a little bit easier to repeat a few things we've already talked about, then it's better to pick the, the first few assignments here, like making a health bar, uh, making a spring, or a donut-shaped spring, uh, and so forth. Um, so just pick whatever you think is on your skill level, what you think you will learn from. Um, and yeah. And so that's, I hope, hope this will be useful. I can also add a few assignments on trajectories now uh, because we've now, um, we've now covered that. Um, so if you want more trajectory stuff, I could add that. Um, Um, I have a question regarding this. I really want to learn, but if this is what we turn in, I might want to go for something I'm more comfortable with. Um, I don't know what you're going to have to turn in. That's up to Christer. He's going to be the one who determines that. Um, I think I will send this to Christer, and he, if he wants to use my assignments, uh, he can do that, or he can come up with his own assignments. Um, so it all just depends on Christer. Um, I'm sure you can convince him to specifically use some of these. Um, and so, yeah. Um, so I think for now, none of these are going to be uh, turned in. Uh, so for now, for, for the rest of today and for tomorrow, um, just work on whatever you want. Uh, even if it's too hard or too easy, pick whatever you want. Um, whatever you think is best for your learning process or the most interesting. 
uh, then just just pick whichever one you want to do. Um, I don't want to pressure you to like do all of them or specific ones. Um, I think I think you're gonna get assignments later uh, after this week from Christer. Um, so for now, ignore assignments. Just pursue your dreams and do the assignments that you want to do that that, that appeal to you as a human being. Um, uh okay all right are there any final questions about mesh generation uh about about our our trajectories or well what else pursue our dreams i'm gonna become a bezier curve you know then i recommend i recommend doing the bezier mesh assignments so, so there you go. So, so, so that's, that's, that's the thing. That is the flow storm assignments. <laughs> um, is it like iterating on the line and then putting caps at the end? And yeah, basically in this case, I don't even need caps. And so the, the tricky thing about generating meshes like this um, is not usually the math itself to get this path because you already know how to do Bezier curves, right? You know how to get a point on a Bezier curve um, and so forth. And so the, um, the challenge usually is just keeping track of all the goddamn indices for each vertex. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of modulo and a lot of like messing about with those. Uh, the biggest challenge is just keeping track of what vertex has what number and then creating the triangles correctly. Um, that is often the hardest part, especially if you want to, um, especially if you want it to be optimized. Uh, there are many like unoptimized ways to do this. Um, okay. Feels weird to get assignments when it's the end of the course. Uh, well, you know, that's, that's how, how it do. Um, it's not really the end today. Remember, we have a lecture on Friday as well. Um, a Friday is going to be our uh, grab bag of random topics that you want to talk about. Um, I think we've um, you started a thread on on this channel, right, where people have suggested a few things. Um, I think what we should do is that after people have suggested things in that thread, um, I'm going to make a Google Doc, like a Google survey and then you can vote on things and then we'll just go from there um will you continue to scribble uh yes i'm gonna keep scribbling because we're gonna talk about more things and so so yes <laughs> um yeah uh all right so if there are topics you want me to talk about again just 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 bring them up um and then then i'll i'll filter and pick based on what you want, what you're interested in, what I'm interested in, what I'm knowledgeable about, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. I guess no more questions. I guess we're all hungry because uh, I've gone a little bit over, over time. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, the rest of the day is just working on assignments and I will be available. If you need me, I'm gonna hang around in Discord. Um, and so, so if you have any questions or you need me for anything, just let me know um, because I am booked today. Uh, I am not here tomorrow. Tomorrow you're gonna work on your own. Uh, I might pop into the Discord every now and then, but that would be unofficially, that would be secret. Um, and then on Friday, we have our, our very, very special day where we're going to go through things that are just whatever you want to talk about. Um, I think that's going to be fun, especially if you pick fun topics. Pick pick good topics. I don't know what that is, but pick them. Um, all right. Um, yep. OK. Thanks, all the students. Go for lunch. Uh, anything anything on, on YouTube? Um, any questions from YouTube? Looks like they're not. Uh, is multiplication faster than division? Uh, generally, yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, 
Okay. That was all of the sort of planned lectures. Um, good luck with the assignments. I uh, hope they're going to be useful and 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 eye-opening and and whatnot. Um, if um, yeah, if you have any questions, if I if you need me to clarify anything about the assignments, just let me know, um, and I will do so. Um, yeah, just don't don't hesitate to ping me. Just just do ping me on Discord. Uh, I'm I'm here to help you, and so don't 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 be scared. <laughs> In fact, it's really awkward for me if nobody pings me because then I feel useless. Uh, so please help me feel useful by pinging me all the time. Um, okay. Uh, thanks for joining, everyone. Uh, thanks YouTube for joining, uh, and I will be back on stream on Friday. That's where we're going to do the last lecture. Otherwise, I'm going to be done with the stream for today. Um, okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you, see you after lunch if you're my students at Future Games and on Friday if you're on the internet. Um, all right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>